Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I want to show you guys how to configure Vim from absolutely nothing. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to install and configure your Vim to look like this. In order to emulate the installation and configuration of Vim from pretty much nothing, I'm going to do the entire installation in a Docker container using a minimal Linux image. You don't need to know anything about Docker to follow along with this, although following along using Docker is encouraged. If you really don't want to mess with the techie stuff, you can skip to the part of the tutorial that shows the installation of the requirements needed to use my vimrc file, and just clone the vimrc from GitHub. The link will be in the description. If you run into issues setting up the vimrc and you've opted out of following along with this tutorial, please take the time to follow along with this tutorial as you'll likely find your answer while doing so. If you do follow along using Docker, by the end you should have enough of an understanding of my setup to be able to make use of my vimrc on your actual system. So us setting up vim in the Docker container is essentially just to get you familiar with how to set everything up so that you are comfortable using my vimrc. So to start, for those of you that wish to follow along, you'll need to make sure you have Docker installed on your system. You can install Docker by accessing this URL. And depending on your operating system, you'd select one of these. And once you have Docker installed, we'll spin up a container using this image here, this Ubuntu image. And if we go down here, we can see that this is a minimal install of Ubuntu. And you can see what this image includes here. So most of the dependencies that we're going to need to use my vimrc file, we're going to need to install ourselves. And I did it this way because I'm not sure what dependencies you already have on your system. So I'm just going to show you how to make my vimrc work starting from nothing. And we can spin up the container by using this docker run command, where run is running this image and where both i and t are being passed to the run command as options. And the i in the it stands for interactive and the t stands for tty. And what this basically does is gives us an interactive terminal within our container. Without this, docker run would just run whatever command that we add here. And then after executing this command, the container will just stop. And yeah, you've probably already guessed, this is the command that is to be run within the container. So our command is the bash shell. So both this set of options, it and this bash command, are working together to give us an interactive shell within the container. And the docker run command will also pull the latest version of this image if we don't already have it cached on our system. So we can just go ahead and run that. And now it's as if we are in another system entirely. We now have a fresh environment. If we ls here, we'll see the file structure of this container, which is a Linux file structure. So let's start by creating an admin user and disabling this root user because I don't want to have those of you that are new to this thinking that it's okay to use the root user of a system. So we'll just go ahead and do user add dash m admin. And the m flag here just makes sure that the added user gets a home directory added to forward slash home. So if we ls forward slash home, we see that we have an admin folder, which will be the home directory for admin. But if we wouldn't have added that m flag, then it would have created the user without a home directory. And then we can give a password to this user by just doing password and then the name of the user. And I'll just do one, two, three, one, two, three. And now we need to modify this user to have administrative privileges by adding this user to the pseudo group. So we'll just do user mod and then we'll do ag and then pseudo for the group and then admin for the user. And the A here is for append, because if we don't add this A flag, it'll remove this admin user from any previous group and add it only to the pseudo group. But all we want to do is add this user to an additional group. Therefore, we'll just append pseudo to the list of groups that this user is a part of. And this G here is just the flag to add supplementary groups that the user should be a member of. So the supplementary group that we want to add this user to is pseudo. And this will give our new user administrative privileges. Now before we start using this admin user, we need to make sure we install some things as root because we won't be able to install them as admin just yet. So we'll do apt git update. And then we'll do apt git install sudo. And this sudo package is needed for the admin user to be able to use the sudo command. And the sudo command is what's going to allow us to temporarily have root privileges, which we're going to need going forward. 
And now we can switch to our admin user. As you can see right now, we're still using root, but we can substitute our current user root with our admin user by running su admin. So now we're substituting for root as admin. So as admin, we can install vim by using the sudo command to temporarily access root privileges. So we can do sudo apt git install vim. And then we need to put in our password. I used one, two, three. And then hit yes here. And now that we have vim, we can disable our root user. And the method that we'll use to disable the root user is we'll just change the root shell in the Etsy password file. So we can do sudo vim and then forward slash etc forward slash password and then vim into the file. And we need to use sudo to access this file, otherwise we won't be able to make changes to it. So as you can see, we have our root user here. And as you can also see, our vim is not configured yet. It's just bare bones vim. And as you can also see, we have an admin user here, which is the user we just created. So what we want to do is to disable root, we're going to remove its default shell. So currently root has a default shell and it's using bash as its default shell. But we're just gonna change this to forward slash sbin forward slash no login. And also let's go down here and change our admin shell to bash. And then we can just save that. So now that that's done, root should no longer be accessible because it has no access to a shell. But we'd of course need to restart our current shell for this to take effect. But let's go ahead and clear this. And now let's switch back into our admin user to make use of the new shell, which was switched to bash. And then we can clear. And now we need to install git. So we can do sudo apt git install git and hit yes. And now that we have git installed, we can pull from the repository where I've stored my vimrc file. And we can do that by doing git clone, and we'll use the URL that's linked in the description, which is the URL for the repository where I've stored my vimrc file. And we can just clone that. Actually, let's change directories first. So if we just hit CD, it'll take us to our user's home directory. So if we ls here, or if we show the current working directory, it shows that we're in home forward slash admin, which is our home directory for admin user. And then we can do git, git clone. And for you, you're not gonna need to do this because I'll make the repository public, but right now the repository is private. So I need to put in user credentials here. And just copy and paste the password. And now we have the repository with vimrc like a pro as the directory, and we can just move vimrc like a pro dot vimrc file. And we'll just move that to the current directory. Then we'll do ls lah, and we can see that we now have this vimrc file within our current home directory of the admin user. And if we ls vimrc like a pro, you'll see that we also have this hotkeys file. And if we go ahead and vim into that, we're gonna get some errors because our vim isn't fully configured yet, but we'll still be able to open the file. And this hotkeys file is just a file that I made accessible via a keyboard shortcut in my vimrc file, which basically tells me how to use all of the common keyboard shortcuts that I've added to my vimrc file. And you'll see how that works soon, but we're going to need to move this hotkeys file into our vim folder, which I'll show in just a second. We're not gonna move it yet, and after you've added my vimrc to your admin user's home directory, you're gonna get a bunch of errors because we haven't installed any of the dependencies that my vimrc needs, so don't worry about any of this. So we'll just clear that. And the first thing that we're going to need to install is vimplug. And if we head over to the repository for vimplug, we'll see that it's a minimalist vim plugin manager. And basically this is going to be what makes it easy to add additional plugins to our Vim configuration and to install it on a Unix based system, which is what we're on now. We're just going to need to run this command. And what this command is going to do is it's going to install this Vim plug file at this URL and it's going to install it onto our home directory and it's going to create DIRS. So it's going to create this Vim folder and it's going to create this autoload folder and it's going to put the Vim plug 
in there. And within this Vim folder, we're also going to add our hotkeys file. But first we need to install curl because the current setup does not have curl. So we can do sudo apt git install curl. Yes. And now that we have curl installed, we can take this and just paste it and then hit enter. And if we ls here, well, we have to do ls lah because that folder is a hidden folder because it has a dot at the beginning of it. You'll see our .vim folder here and we can change directories into that .vim folder and we can ls and we see we have the auto load folder and we can ls that auto load folder and we'll see our plug.vim file there. So now we have vim plug installed and we can just change back to our home directory and we can copy from vimrc like a pro the hotkey file and we want to copy it into this vim directory. Now if we ls.vim you see that we have hotkeys and auto load. And then let's go ahead and clear that. And actually we'll want to make this hotkeys file read only. So we can do chmod 444 and then we can do dot vim forward slash hotkeys. And if we ls dot vim or ls lah dot vim, we see that this hotkeys file can now only be read. So let's clear. Okay, now let's briefly go over the contents of the vimrc file that we pulled from the repo. And we're going to get a bunch of errors when opening this file because we still haven't yet installed the necessary dependencies. So at the top of this page, this line here is just mapping escape to JJ because I personally don't like using escape to leave insert mode. For example, if we do insert here, usually we would press escape to leave. So if I were to type something, I would usually press escape to leave insert mode here. But for me, I actually like to use JJ to leave insert mode. So if I type something, I press JJ to leave. But that's just personal preference. So if you want, you can map this to something different or you can just avoid mapping it all together. But that's just what this line does. And this turns on syntax, which basically just turns on syntax highlighting. So if I were to do syntax off, you see the syntax highlighting is all completely gone. Everything is just white. So syntax on just turns syntax highlighting on. And this default FCF default command is basically down here in the plugins. Let's see, FCF. We're installing this FCF command line fuzzy finder and you can access this git repo here to get an idea of what that actually is but for the purposes of this setup we'll be using it to search for files and the default command to search for the files is going to be ripgrep which is this rg here which we're going to have to install and you'll see how that's going to work when we get to it i'll go into a little bit more detail about that and then here we just have a bunch of options to set. And for each individual option, if you wanna know what the option is, you can just type help here. So let's just do no compatible. And you'll get the documentation of what the actual option does. This option has the effect of making Vim either more bi-compatible or make Vim behave in a more useful way. And you can do that for all of these to figure out what each individual one is doing. And I've also added a comment here that shows you that options are viewable by using this options command. And you see we can view options here. And you can also do this set all command and it'll show you all of the options available. So I've added comments here to show you how to actually figure out what each individual option is doing. I even have the help one here to show you how to use the help one. So that's those options there. So this here is going to add a column to the 100th column of the file and I'll show you what that does in a second. And the same with this, this is just going to change the color of that column. And I'll show you how these two are working in just a second. And the most important part is here, our plugins. 
So anything between this call plug begin and call plug end here is going to be a plugin that we're trying to install or that we install. So I put a comment above each plugin to tell what each individual plugin is doing. If any of these plugins are, aren't useful for you, you can just go ahead and remove them from this section. So you can just delete it and then it won't install them when we use plug. So this one here, this one's the most important one because this one is going to be the one that gives us auto completion and a bunch of other things related to each individual programming language that we're going to be coding in. So let's go ahead and go to the GitHub page for this one to get more information about that. So as you can see here, we have this GitHub page for this conquer of completion. And basically it says, make your Vim or Neo Vim as smart as VS code. So basically most of what makes my Vim setup work the way that it does is this plugin here. And with this plugin, for each individual language that we work with, we're going to have to set up the language server for it as well. For example, as you can see here, it says you have to install CLC extension or configure language servers for LSP support. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to install this and then we'll use this CLC install to install the necessary dependencies for each individual language that we're working with. And also within our Vim file, we have this example Vim configuration here. So basically I've just copied all of this here and added it to our Vim file. As we can see, if we go back to our Vim file, so within this Vim file, if we go down here where it says CLC NVIM settings start, everything all the way down to CLC NVIM settings end is just this here. And if you want to dive deeper into this and read into what each individual configuration is doing, you can go ahead and do that and maybe make changes if you need to. But for my setup, I haven't needed to make any changes to this here. So how do we install this? Well, this is going to be installed with Vimplug, but this also has dependencies as well. So for example, this needs an installation of Node.js 10.12 or greater, which we will install soon. So let's go back up here and back to our plugins. And the next one is prettier, and this is just a formatter, and it formats JavaScript files, TypeScript files, JSON files, and a few more, HTML, CSS. So this formatter is used for multiple different types of files. And then this one here is to comment and uncomment lines. So with this configured, we can use a keyboard shortcut to comment out or uncomment out lines. And we'll go over how that works soon as well, once we finish installing everything. And this one here, it says a light and configurable status line tab line plugin for Vim. It's basically going to make this line here look prettier and have more information in it. It's actually pretty useful. And then this one, Nerd Tree, is going to enable us to see the directory structure of the files that we're working in. And again, we'll see how this works soon. And undo tree is going to let us see the tree structure of our undo history because the undo history in Vim isn't linear. So it's like, usually it's like you'd make a change and then you can either undo or redo. And that's like the only two directions you can go in. But in Vim, you can actually access different branches of the undo tree. And then this one, this polyglot, it's basically going to give us syntax highlighting for a bunch of different languages. So like instead of installing language packs for individual languages to get syntax highlighting, this one just has a bunch of them all in one. And we've already gone over FCF. It's going to allow us to search for files using ripgrep, which is very fast. And this plugin is for the Go programming language. So if you don't work with Go at all, you're not going to need this one, but it has many useful tools, including uh, linting and formatting and stuff like that. And then we have this Python code formatter, black, which is just going to be what we use to format Python code. And then this here is one of our color schemes, Groovebox. And we're going to have two color schemes here. We're going to have this one, and we're going to have this one and you're going to be able to choose between the two by just commenting out one of them down here. So if you want to use this one, you would 
remove the comment from here and then add the comment to this one and vice versa. And that's the end of our plugins. Those are all the plugins that we'll be using for this setup. And then the next most important part is our keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to map certain key combinations to certain functions. And this map leader is going to be what we use to call this leader here. So mine is just a space. So if it says leader HK is going to do this, then that just means that I press space HK and it will pull up our hotkeys, the file that I showed you that we put in the .vim folder. And we can just close that. So I set leader HK for hotkey to do a vim split of that file, that hotkeys file. And then instead of looking at this leader, leader P, leader, leader G to do certain things, you can just do leader HK and then it'll show you space HK shows hotkeys. And it's just a easier way to see what each individual key combination does. So we can leave that. So that's what all of these are. All of these are just key mappings to do certain functions. And we're going to go through all of these as well once we finish installing everything. And as we said before, this NVIM setting start is that configuration on the CLC NVIM GitHub page. And we'll just go all the way to the end of it because we don't need to go over that. And then here we're setting the CLI executable path of Prettier. So basically when we use Prettier within Vim, it's still using an executable outside of Vim, of course. And we're setting the path to that executable here. So we want to use the Prettier that's in our Vim plug directory. And then this max line length that Prettier will wrap on, it basically says that if our lines of code exceed 100 columns, because here it's, it's 100, so if our lines of code exceed 100 columns, to break those lines when we use Prettier to format the code. And you can set this to whatever you want. If you don't like really long lines of code in maybe like a TypeScript or a JavaScript file, you can change this to like 70 or something. And then when you use Prettier, it will format the code such that none of the lines within the code exceed the 70th column of the row and I like it at 100 so I'll just leave it there and the default is auto and as explained before these are our color schemes and in order for this groove box color scheme to work we have to make sure this term variable environment variable is set to this x term 256 color if not this groove box one won't work so yeah we can go ahead and leave this file and then start installing our dependencies so let's start by installing Node and NPM because we're going to need Node for both Prettier and for Conquer of Completion and we're going to need NPM as well. So we'll just do sudo apt git install node.js and NPM and we'll need our password Then yes. And then they will want us to add a geographical area. I'm just gonna put one for both of them, including the time zone. And once we have npm and node.js installed, we can do node dash dash version, and we'll see that we have a pretty old version of node. So actually let's go ahead and upgrade the version as well. So we'll do sudo npm dash clean, and we'll do sudo npm install gn then we'll do sudo in stable and now if we do node version the execute path equals path. so here it says the node command change location and the old location may be remembered in your shell to reset the command location hash either start a new shell or execute path equals path Let's just exit this shell and then do su admin and which node, node dash dash version. And then now we have our updated node version, which is 14.16.1 now. And now we need to install yarn. So we'll do sudo npm install global yarn. 
And we also need to install ripgrep for our fzf default command that I told you about in our vimrc file. So we'll do sudo apt-git install ripgrep. And we'll need to install Python 3, pip3, and venv. We'll do sudo apt-git install python3, python3, pip, python3, venv. And hit yes. And we're also going to need to install Go. And to install Go, we need to install wget. So we'll do sudo apt-git install wget. And we can get the Go tarball for Linux from this website. So at this URL here, golang.org forward slash dl for download. And you see that we have the Linux tarball here. We can just right click it and do copy link. And then let's ls, let's change directory to our home directory. And we can do sudo wget c, and then that link that we just copied. And if we ls, you'll see we have the tarball here. And we can extract it by using tar xzf, and then the name of that tarball. And we're just going to extract it here. And if we ls, you see we have this go directory, which contains everything that we need. And we need to move this go directory to user local. So we'll move it to user local. And then we need to add it to our path in our dot profile file. So we'll do vim dot profile. And in here, we'll do export path equals path and user local go bin. And it's gonna add the binary folder within that go directory, within our user local directory to our path. And let's also add the term variable that I told you about for the Groovebox color scheme to work. So it's gonna be x term 256 color. And we can just save this file and then we can do source profile, which is going to execute this profile and in turn it will update our environment variables with the environment variables that we export in the file as well. So now if we do environment, we can see that our term environment variable is now set to xterm256 and we can see that our path variable now has user local go bin in the path as well. So now if we do go, then it'll run our go command. Go is a tool for managing Go source code. And if we do which Go, it'll show the user local Go bin Go. And now finally, we can try and use vim plug to install all of our plugins because I think we have all of the dependencies now. So let's do vim, vimrc. And to install the plugins, all we have to do is, to install all of the plugins in between plug start and plug end, all we have to do is run this plug install command. And as you can see, it's installing the plugins. And once that is finished, we can go ahead and quit that. And we can quit this as well. And let's just clear this. And let's go back into our vimrc file. And as you can see now, our color scheme is using this Groovebox color scheme here. And if we want to change to this color scheme, we can comment out this one. Oh, and also we can now press um, leader leader C to comment and uncomment. So for example, if I wanted to come up here and comment all of this, I could just press leader leader C. And to uncomment it, I can do the same thing, or I can just press undo. And then if we go down here to our key mappings, you can see here this nerd comment, which is what we're using to comment out and uncomment lines, is mapped to leader leader and then C. And our leader is space. And you can change the leader to whatever you want, but I like using space. 
because space is just convenient. So anyways, we can comment out Groovebox and leave this one uncommented. And we can just save and then we can bend back into the VimRC file again. And now we're using this color theme. And I like both of these color themes, so I usually switch between the two. Sometimes one might look better in a different language than the other. And I'll show you guys that in a second. But that's how the stuff with the color themes work. And now let's go back over to this part and see how this is working. So this here is setting the default command to be used when we use this fzf plug. And to use this fzf plug, I've mapped the keys to leader leader f. So if we press leader leader f, we'll be able to search anything from our current directory onward using this fuzzy finder. So there aren't any files in our home directory yet other than the configuration stuff for Vim and our shell files and stuff like that. But I'll give you guys a more solid example of how this is working in just a second. So we can leave that by pressing exit and we can quit. And what we want to do is we want to clone some open source repositories in Python, Go, and JavaScript, just so that we can test to make sure our language servers and our code formatters are working as expected. So let's clone a Python project first. So for our Python project, we'll clone Babel. And it says here that Babel is a Python library that provides an integrated collection of utilities that assist with internalizing and localizing Python applications. And this is an open source project, so we can just go ahead and copy this. And we just do git clone and paste that in. And now we have Babel in our home directory. And we'll do the same for a Go project. And an open source Go project is Hugo which is actually a really cool project. Uh, it's a static site generator. And we can just go ahead and copy this as well. And we can do git clone and then paste that in. Then we can clear that and we can ls and we have Babel and we have Hugo. And let's just remove this go tarball. And now we just need to clone a JavaScript project. And ironically, we're just going to clone Prettier, which is one of the plugins that we're using. But yeah, Prettier is actually also an open source project. So we can go ahead and just copy that and then git clone. And let's clear and then let's vim our vimrc. And let's use our FCF, our fuzzy finder with ripcrep by just doing space space F. And now to search for a Python file, we can just type in .py and then it'll show us all the .py files within our current directory onward. We can just select any one of these, hmm, preferably one that actually has code. Do this one and currently we don't have our Python language server configured properly so if we try to go to definition for anything we're going to get this error jump definition provider not found for current buffer your language server doesn't support it so what we need to do is we need to do cock install and then CLC pyrite And once that's installed, we can close this. And now we'll be able to go to definition. So if we go to append here, we can go to definition and we can go back and let's see if black works. So we use the black command and it's gonna create a virtual environment for black. And then it just tells us to upgrade black in the future, use black upgrade command and restart Vim. So black is our code formatter for Python. So we can just press enter there. And if we do tab tab B, it's going to format our Python code. And also if we have errors in here, they're going to show up. So if we just did something random here, we'd get an error. Random is not defined and we can format our code. We can go to definition. 
go to definition for variables as well. And yeah, we're pretty much good to go. We do self and then we can see all of the methods. We can see what this is, what an import is. And definition not found for group, but that's fine. And we can go ahead and comment things out, or undo, and let's quit. And let's go back to our vimrc. And now let's check JavaScript. So we'll do .js. So we can just look for files that are .js. Let's go to this one. Oh, these are just exports. So let's do a different one. And as you can see, when we're searching for files, we can get a sample of what the file has within it over here, which is really cool. So let's go to this one. This one looks great. And right now we're not going to be able to do anything here either. Go to definition or anything like that either. So if we do console dot, there's no options there, but we'll just do CLC install. And for JavaScript and TypeScript, we're going to use CLC TS server. And we can just close that. And now if we do console dot, oh, it's still acquiring typings. Let's see. Let's just try to go to definition then. So yeah, go to definition is working. Then we have our warnings here. And let's try console dot again. And now we can see all of the available methods for console. We can just pick one, we can undo, and let's see if prettier works. So for prettier, we do space space p. Mm, fail to parse buffer, eh? So fail to parse buffer, that's not normal. We'll get back to that though. Let's see, package.json. And Prettier works fine on that. So here, as you can see, since we have a line length limit of 100, like it won't break the line unless it exceeds column 100. If we do Prettier here, it's going to expand these lines again. And if we undo it, it's going to compress them. But it's all a matter of your preferences. Like if you want them to be more compressed like this, you can change the configuration for Prettier. And let's see why Prettier wasn't working on that JS file. Let's see this one. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not working on the JS files. We'll have to get back to that. And last but not least, let's do our Go files. So we'll do dot go. And let's see if the format for Go works. And it's space space G to format Go files. And the first time you do it, it's gonna take a while. And let's try the linter. And the linter was successful. There were no issues. And let's see if we can get the methods for format. We cannot because we need to do CLC install, CLC go. And when that's finished, we can just quit that. And let's go ahead and import format. And do format dot. Hmm. So we're able to go to definition for OS. Let's see something.
Oh, there we go. Now we have all the methods for format and their definitions. Okay, so now it's working as expected. And as you can see, things are going pretty slow. And that's because I'm doing this inside of a Docker container and there's kind of a lot going on. But everything is working as expected. So we can go ahead and undo that and quit. And lastly, we need to figure out why we can't use prettier on .js files. Actually, let's just try and use another open source JavaScript project because I suspect that maybe we're running into issues because we're trying to use prettier on prettier. So let's just remove prettier and let's do, let's do this TensorFlow repository. So we can just go over here and copy this and then git clone. Us. And then let's just vim and use find and then do dot js. And let's see what we have. Let's just go with this one, I guess. All right, so let's see. All right, let's try and use prettier. And there we go, it works. Undo, redo. So as you can see, it's changing the single quotes to double quotes. So we can undo, then we can redo. And it's also rearranging this section here because we're allowing the line length to be longer. And yeah, we can go ahead and undo that and quit and go back into our vimrc. And there's still something that's not working as expected. This part here, set color column, highlight color column, huh? Maybe if we move this to the top. Nope. Yeah, so I can't seem to get the color column working correctly. So that's just going to have to be something for another video. But anyways, other than that, we pretty much have everything configured and everything is working as expected. Let's go to our keyboard shortcuts and see if they're all working. So leader hk opens our hotkeys file, which is as expected. And we have leader gd to go to the definition and leader gr to go to reference. And what that means is if we open a file and let's just do a pi file. And say, for example, we want to know what this local data dict comes from. We could just do space gd and it takes us to the definition. And the same thing for references. So if we want to see where this key variable is referenced, we could do space gr and it'll show us where it's referenced. So we have the original definition of it here and then it's referenced here. So that's what these two keyboard shortcuts do. And I forgot all about nerd tree. So nerd tree is going to, if we do space T, we get a tree of our directory. So we can traverse our directory like that. So it's just leader T. And you can just traverse the files. 
You can also go here and add an additional file and you can just put something in here to add the file. But actually we're not going to. And prettier is a formatter of course, so we're gonna do space space P and go format is the format for go files and black is the formatter for Python files and leader leader u shows us the undo tree. So let's uh, leave that and then we'll go ahead and just put in some stuff here. We will see all of the changes that we've made. So 11 seconds ago, we made this change. Originally, it looked like this. Then we have the change we made here. Then we have the change we made here. And we can go back to just this change or we can go back to the original. And that's pretty cool. And then files is the one we've been using, space space f. We can search for a file by a name or by a prefix or suffix or whatever. So we can just do history and it'll show files with history. And like we've been doing, we could do like .py and it'll show all the .py files. And it's really convenient and useful. So I suggest you get used to making use of that. It will increase your productivity quite a bit. And then we can exit that. And this go meta linter is basically just a compilation of linters for Go. So basically when I run this on a Go file, it uses like multiple different linters to lint the file. And for this one, I did three liters in G because I'm already using liter liter G for Go format. So it's one, two, three G. But of course this isn't a Go file, so it's not gonna work. And then this is for git files and it's just control P but this isn't a git repo, so it's not gonna work. Actually, we can go into our git repo. Let's go ahead and save that. Vim, vimrc, like a pro. Oh, actually, why don't I just go into one of these open source projects? Let's go into Hugo, git status, and then let's vim, and then do control P. And here we can see all of the git files. And let's go back into our vimrc. Let's just change directory. And go to map. No, not that map, this map. So that's that one. And we went over these two nerd commenter, we can just comment and uncomment with ease. Comment, uncomment. And then this one is just going to go to the next buffer or the previous buffer. So if we do leader tab, it does B next. And if we do leader tab tab, it goes B previous. And I can show you what that looks like by doing a search for another file, going into the file, and then we can go to the previous by doing leader tab tab, and it'll take us back to this file. And then we can do leader tab, and it'll go back to this file. And that's going to be it for our hotkeys. And actually that's going to be it for this tutorial. We've configured everything and installed all of the dependencies for making use of my vimrc. And after watching this and going through this tutorial, you should feel pretty comfortable with my vimrc. So you can go ahead and just clone the repository or copy and paste it from the repository and set it up in your own local environment and get started with it. And I encourage you to look into additional plugins and find plugins that kind of suit your style and anything that you see that can make you more productive, a more productive programmer or engineer, go ahead and give it a shot and add it to the plug install section of our vimrc and then yeah, if you have any questions, if you have any issues, go ahead and leave a comment and I will try and get back to you. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.